The reality is is now on Patreon, and here are some of our fabulous supporters. Tracy Newman, my presence is a gift. So remember the thank you note. Lily, some people say I'm too much, but she's just starting. Marl Farsi, reading is fundamental, and in Farsi, the reads are monumental. Tracy Masters, when you're the master of your own destiny, no one can take you down. Amanda Agosti, some Amandas are text bots, but this Amanda is as real as it gets. Ade Ade Dokun, it may look like I'm stirring the pot, but actually I'm just smoking it. Paula Bretrude, if you think I'm a bitch, you're probably right, and you probably deserved it. Lola Del Rio, whatever Lola wants, Lola gets, and I get it all. Naveen Jonathan, I'll give you the shirt off my back, and also by unsolicited opinion. Jada, people are intimidated by my great success, and my great ass. Deepa Kanapoli. Some people say I have secrets, but at least they're not federal indictments. Hadil Ibrahim. Some things are too hot to handle, like me and the tea I spill. Srinidhi Subramaniam. I have four degrees, eight syllables, and zero Fs to give. Shannon Anthony. There's no fun in moderation, but there's plenty of shade. Brianna Tooney. Some people strive for perfection, but I'm already there. Rita Ryan. Don't be fooled by my Midwest charm, because I'm nobody's fool. And finally, Beth Bear. The secret to my success is staying out of your BS. Does Monday at the office feel like a storm? Not with Microsoft Copilot. That feeling when Copilot gets everyone up to speed instantly? It's sunny again. When Copilot simplifies complex data so your teams can act, that sun's shining on a beach. And when Copilot uncovers hidden insights, you're on that beach with your people and you find buried treasure. That's Microsoft Copilot. Learn more at Microsoft.com slash AI for all. Is this how Christian kids feel on the morning of Christmas? (laughs) (laughs) What a blessing. What a blessing. Oh my God. Oh my God. God. So (laughs) listeners, we usually record our episode that releases on Saturdays on Thursday night, but we are recording Wednesday right after watching OC. Like literally minutes after watching. Yeah. Yeah. It's like 10 It's good and bad. Like I am so excited that we are recording right away so I can say what I feel in the moment. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm like, uh, I want to watch it again. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> I can't wait to watch it again. <sighs> so when we were planning what we were going to talk about today, it originally it was going to be OC and Ultimate Girls Trip, but there was no new Ultimate Girls Trip today or this mm-hmm. week. Mm-hmm. So I was telling Arthi, like, I think we should talk about Winter House a little bit because I ended up watching the whole thing. I was going to tell Arthi about it because the Summer House trailer came out and there's a couple yeah. of Winter House people now in the Summer House trailer because I was like, we could not possibly spend like an hour talking about the OC episode <laughs> wondering we might be able to how did bravo not really overhype this episode i don't understand it like how did bravo let this be a sleeper it was like one after the other after the other it was just absolute chaos and yeah how was the gensha after gensha gets arrested episode better than this one i don't know (laughs) Yeah, I don't know. Just people talking on the in the in the van. The one where she got arrested was good, but this is better. Yeah, it just was like a real back to classic OC. Oh my god! Yes, you had glitz and glam and beautiful fake people, and then just a chaotic fight. Thirty six thousand dollars worth of sushi. Thirty six thousand dollars worth of sushi. Very staged acting, like very oh. staged scenes. It was oh, just, yeah. Mm. yeah. So we open up on this episode back at Heather's party. Everybody's coming in. Oh, so you remember who Jen reminds you of? Mm-hmm. I remembered who Nicole reminds me of. Okay, Go Nicole ahead. reminds me of Caroline Stanbury's ex sister in law. Oh yes, 
Yes, that's what Sophie? people have been saying. Sophie, Sophie Sanberry. But she's like a bootleg Sophie. Oh, she's like a, she's totally. like a, I hate to say she's like a trailer park Sophie she's Stanberry. No, she's bootleg. It, it, she is like, she wanted Sophie's face, but then she decided to go to Mexico to get it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like she went to Tijuana to get the Sophie face versus going to, you know, Terry Dubrow. <laughs> <laughs> Although I don't other, know. The other thing was somebody just shared with me her face before she got all this done to her face, mm-hmm. her prior face. She looks a lot like bootleg Pam Anderson. Oh, okay. And so I'm thinking, okay, so her face is completely changed. Yeah. And Terry's face is completely changed. Yes. No wonder they didn't know who they were. <laughs> 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 Yeah, it's possible. <laughs> and also Noella, like, because I didn't pay attention at all in the first mm-hmm. episode to these side characters. Yeah, these yeah. side, I mean, they're not side, they're house, mm-hmm. housewives. But I didn't pay attention to Noella. But Noella has this weird Muppet voice that kind of reminds mm-hmm. me of like Jennifer Coolidge, except Jennifer Coolidge is like raspy. Mm-hmm. But Noella kind of sounds like a, like a sock puppet. Yeah. And like a, yeah. you know, like a preschool teacher is putting on a show. That's what Noella sounds like. So for me, Dr. Jen reminds me of Candace King. Yes. That's the name of the actress. Yes. Um, and she's one of the trans actors. And she typically comes as oftentimes in like in Sherlock Holmes in the TV series and a couple of Law and Order series episodes. She's come as a doctor. So she's come with the white coat. <laughs> Which is why it was even more striking for me. It's like, if we took John, Dr. Jen and just, you know, made her taller, she would look like Candace Kane. Yeah. So that's why I was like, that looks exactly like that woman. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's, so now it's, it's cleared up. Yeah. Yeah. Shannon shows up and she greets Nicole and she's just being so fake with her. One of my favorite things is Shannon cheers and she cheers to meeting new people, which I am so excited about. <laughs> I was like, you are so, oh my God, Shannon is Megan so King entertaining. Ed- Megan King Edmonds is like, what? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, somewhere Megan King Edmonds is like, can I interest you in attending a charity event? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Gina and Emily are like whispering about Nicole's boobs and then they're mm. like touching Nicole's boobs. <laughs> I want to know how Nicole can see anything because between her lashes and the cheeks, I'm like, her eyes are closed. Her nose, nose is scaring me. Her nose, her nose, yeah. Her nose is um, scary. Any more work and it's going to fall off. And here's the thing. If people, we are we are feminists here, okay? Mm. People want to change their bodies. That's up to them. That is their prerogative. But you guys, people are changing their faces to look like Instagram filters now. Mm-hmm. And they look insane, okay? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, women are beautiful as they are. Yeah. And even her bootleg Pam Anderson picture. I was like, okay, well, you're so cute girl. Like, yeah, you don't need to do this. Normal. Yeah, why? Why? I don't understand. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> then chaos erupts because it yep. starts with Gina having some sort of like a panic and mm-hmm. pulling Heather aside and telling Heather what she heard about Nicole through Shannon. Honestly, I'm still very confused about mm-hmm why Gina had to tell Heather. I guess at the end of the episode, you get clarity. But Mm -hmm. at this point, I'm still very confused. One, why Gina told Heather. And two, why Heather gets so mad. Mm -hmm. And the only only explanation I have for why Heather gets so mad is that Heather, because you know what? When Heather is thrown off her game, she stares right into the fucking camera. Her chin becomes sharper. Her face changes. (laughs) She goes full full Disney villain. Yes. (laughs) Her eyes get darker. Her face gets all sharper. Her the, the lips are sharper. the lips disappear. The, lip, the lips disappear. The chin seems to grow longer. It was just <laughs> like her face changes when she's confronted with that, and it's scary. It's scary, scary. I can understand how like Gina and Emily. And Gina, especially, she's like, Heather, school me like a schoolgirl. She's like, I am, they are shit scared of pissing up Heather because that is a scary face. I wonder if some of it is also like they're scared of pissing up Heather because they're like, we might not have an OC. Like, mm-hmm. this show might not make it if we don't right. bring Heather back. Right. 
So Heather gets upset. She says, are you fucking kidding me, basically? Are you guys really doing this essentially on camera? Let me just talk about why I think why Gina brought it up there. Yeah. I think she does give an explanation afterwards about how she felt when she was in a similar situation. But I think that's only part of the story. I, I Like I said in the last episode, Gina and Emily do not understand how all of a sudden Shannon has become their friend. Yeah. So they are like, this bitch is up to something. Yes. And they keep, you know, mocking her friendship. Her overtures seem very artificial to them. So they're like waiting for the other shoe to drop. And then coming to this party, they're like, oh, so she told us this. And then this girl is going to show up here. And Heather's not going to know, but we are going to know. So Heather's going to be upset with Shannon anyway for having told us. But she's also going to be upset with us now for having known and not told her. Yeah. So that's why Gina is like, no, you don't get that get to play the game. I'm going to flip the table on you. Mm. And she flips the table on her. Mm. Okay. That's yeah, I, what's happening. Yeah. Heather, on the other hand, gets mad. Not so much at Gina. Not so much at Shannon. She is looking directly at the camera and she's like, are we doing this? now <laughs> and yeah. that's her saying to production what episode two you're fucking with me yes episode two i'm here to rescue this show and you brought this nicole here and you set up shannon to stir the pot you don't get to set my script yeah. I am the one setting the script. Yes, That's exactly. <laughs> exactly. So Emily sitting down with Shannon and Nicole and Emily, <laughs> Emily loves to put Shannon in the spot because Shannon's sitting yeah. right next to Heather, right. right next to Nicole. And she asks if Shannon told Heather what was going on. Shannon obviously freaks out. And I mm. love, 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 love when any scene has Shannon saying, are you kidding me right now? <laughs> Are you, you have kidding got right to now? be kidding me. Yeah. And then she, and, and <laughs> after that, it's like, up, uh, 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 uh. But she you promised me. me. You <laughs> promised me. It's like, these are, this is not David and these are not your wedding vows. Like, you need to calm down. <laughs> and I love when, Heather, I love when Gina's like, it's not the sisterhood of the traveling pants, Shannon. <laughs> <laughs> So as Gina and Shannon are bickering, this is when Heather goes, fuck you guys. Fuck you, Bravo. I'm shutting this down. And then she goes, Terry, I'm leaving the show. (laughs) And Terry's like, what? No, 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 no. Remember our plan. You you put in $36,000 worth of sushi and we make $136,000 back. (laughs) That's the plan, Heather. Go right back. I'm going to wear my leather coat. We are both going back. Get her a fresh glass of chips. And then she comes down. Yeah, because Terry had come down early and was like, I'm going to bed. I have to right, surgery. Right, do surgery right. in the morning. What yeah, happened to was, surgery? Yeah, he came back fully dressed. Yeah, well, and, so why, and is, has, why is Terry always in a leather jacket? <laughs> <laughs> it matches his face. Leather, leather. <laughs> <laughs> leather goes with leather. <laughs> oh, but then she comes down with the full fresh glass of shit. <laughs> it's and that's her prop for the rest of the rest of the party. She literally doesn't take a sip, but she holds the chip in front of her as she's talking to people and using her claw hands. To- <laughs> Somebody very early, like when I start, when I first started working, like in my early twenties, mm. one of my supervisor managers, whatever, pointed out to me that I have a nervous habit of taking a cup of beverage with me all the time at work. Mm. She would always say, "You always have, you always bring a cup with you, or you're always sipping on something, or you mm. always have it like a prop. It's like your emotional support coffee cup." Right. That's what Heather has. Heather has right. an emotional support. My husband brings emotional support coffee mug with him when we go shopping. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like. I'd from now he on. He just like walks this. around. I'm like, your hands are useless to me. You are not. Uh, you're not carrying anything. <laughs> you're sitting there, and that coffee is gonna spill somewhere. Put it. Leave it in the car. No, he brings it with him. That's his emotional <laughs> support coffee. <mug. laughs> From now on, I'd like to swap it out. I'd like to have an emotional support champagne glass like Heather does. That would be awesome. As all this is happening, Heather has walked away. She's shutting it down. Gina and Shannon are looking at each other. And Shannon is like, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> she's freaking out. 
<laughs> and Gina's like yelling at her. And this is the funniest fucking thing to me. Noella says, this is not how you <laughs> talk to, you talk to any elders. <laughs> God, that was so beautiful. And then she corrects herself and said, not talk to anybody. But then it's <laughs> like, I told you, Shannon and Ramona are being put into the aging old lady box. Yes. And yes. Is- <laughs> Noella saying that just underlined Shannon is old. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, like Noella finds her in by coming to the aid of this the elderly. <laughs> <laughs> Let me help you cross the street. <laughs> <laughs> then Emily and Nicole, for some reason, go at it, which was very confusing and is probably the most bizarre moment of the night. She, Emily starts to ask Nicole about the suit. Nicole gets really upset. Nicole is like, well, it's not your business. And if I wanted your opinion, I would ask you for it. Because Emily's trying to present it like I care about you, which is, all, yeah. again, very weird. Because as Nicole reminds her a couple seconds later, you are 20 minutes, girl. <laughs> yes. But also the way Nicole sets it up is by saying, I was an impressionable model yeah. and my lawyers forced me to sue Terry. Yeah. yeah. And she's saying that to a lawyer, Emily. Yeah. Like, since when do lawyers force the clients to sue? I don't understand how they can force them. I mean, Bravo has some very shady lawyers right now between <laughs> Craig Conover and Tom Girardi. But they're not forcing, they're begging <laughs> that's true and also apparently uh sweet james or whatever his name is noella's husband is another one of those corrupt ambulance chasers mm-hmm. so they have this weird fight and emily absolutely loses her mind because she no nicole keeps telling her to sit when she's already sitting she's like how much lord do you want me to go i'm already sitting my ass is on the seat and then emily says something like she looks like me, but I'm just a better version of that. And I was like, are you Vicky Gunvalson? Is the spirit of Vicky Gunvalson like possess your body? It was such a Vicky and Tamara situation because right. Gina, like Tamara, stirs the pot. Yes. Vicky, like Emily, gets in the middle of it and blows it way out of proportion. Right. And then Emily, like Vicky, will like run off mm-hmm. and as Tamara aka Gina is trying to resolve the situation Emily's like no you, you come here come you're with, with me you're with me you're supposed to be my sister my my soulmate my best friend that's, that's what it so was true. I was like what is happening it was so chaotic like, I loved it she I was like at, in that moment Emily forgot Gina's name she was like you you there <laughs> you you are with me you come with me Uh, and um, Gina was doing what Tamara usually is like, give me a hug, give me a hug, give me a hug, and let me calm you down. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Mm. Like, just trying to de-escalate both of them. It was so funny. So it was so. Fu- it was also funny that Nicole was sitting between a doctor and a lawyer. <laughs> and talking about talking poorly. About, <laughs> poorly about both. Yeah, yeah, amazing. <laughs> Oh, my God. It was so good. (laughs) And then all in the midst of this, Heather's daughter, Max, is like downstairs. She's like, okay, I guess there's some leftover sushi. I'm going to eat it. She She comes like, I'm 17. I can watch this. I cannot drink, but I can watch. And she's sitting there. And Noella, she is like seriously comforting Shannon. Yeah. And then in like a split second, she goes from a very serious, sad face. She looks at Max and, oh, hi, Max. Are you the bisexual? (laughs) I'm bisexual, too. And literally just like (laughs) leaves Shannon in the dust. And Shannon's just staring there. She's standing there like Jim Hale halberding the camera. She's like, has this just happened? I have one friend here. I have one friend. Somebody was supposed to help me cross the road. And this young person has found an even younger person to talk to. Hey, you were halfway crossing the road with me. You, you, you literally you left her in the middle of the traffic. Middle of the traffic. You didn't even take me to the divider. You left me in the traffic. No. Because you saw you saw another bisexual. <laughs> 
Uh, oh my god, Noella's storyline. No, Noella's. Oh, you can be on the housewives if you are friends with, if you take care of Shannon. Yeah, and your storyline is you are bisexual. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> That's uh, it. That's it. Oh my god. And all along throughout the episode, I kept looking at this very stoic guard. She had security guards in her house. And did you notice that she had like velvet ropes cordoned off areas of the house that people couldn't go to? Like a museum. Like a museum. She had velvet red ropes Mm -hmm. that certain stairways and certain places that the camera crew and the women couldn't go to. Mm -hmm. And she had like security guards standing there with masks on, (laughs) just staring straight ahead as the women are fighting. I really, I feel like Bravo had to do some severe begging to bring Mm -hmm. Heather back to revive OC because OC ended a long time ago Mm -hmm. and they didn't start filming it. OC ended in the beginning of of Mm -hmm. COVID. Yeah, yeah. So the fact that it's now filming and now we have a show like almost at the end of 2021, that's crazy. So it it sounds like Bravo had to do a lot of like begging to bring Heather Mm -hmm. back. And Heather had a lot of stipulations to say, okay, we're going to do it my way. We're not going to film in certain areas if I shut things down. Like, that's what it felt like. It feels Mm -hmm. very much like this is Heather Dubrow's show. No, yes. And Bravo just has to go along with it. Exactly. And she was, she hadn't approved of the script and she was pissed off about it and yeah. that's why she was shutting down the show i'm very convinced that she went upstairs and terry said we could go back to bravo and we could renegotiate this yeah just go down and finish the scene and then you can pick it up with the producers and say hey, yeah listen, this wasn't cool yeah then heather brings terry down in his leather jacket who goes proceeds to very fake confront mm-hmm. nicole hey are you nicole wise you sued me. And Nicole, and Nicole is like, and you are. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> Terry doesn't look like Terry anymore. <laughs> it's just, it's so funny. It's so funny because <laughs> as they're walking into this room and Nicole is sitting there upset, you can get catch just a glimpse of Heather staring right into the camera. Uh-huh. And then she looks at Nicole and she said, why didn't you ever tell me? It's yeah. so fake. It's the fakest thing I have ever seen in my life. And I absolutely loved it so much. <laughs> I ate it up like $36,000 worth of sushi. <laughs> because they're sitting there and they're having this c- concerned conversation with Nicole. Who is drunk out of her mind by then. She's super drunk. And Heather is not at all drunk. She's still holding that single glass of champagne that hasn't you know she hasn't sipped even a little bit of it's always chilled it's always chilled the bubbles is always coming up i mean it's like crisp yeah it's crisp i'm like i feel like maybe she has multiple like somebody is handing her a fresh one (laughs) for every one of it's like this is the take two take three let's yeah i feel like as soon as like condensation starts to happen at the edge of the glass she's like i need a new glass we need to start over (laughs) so they're talking and we learn as you said that noella said that she was convinced by her attorneys to do it and she didn't even think it was a bad job and then she ended up dropping it anyway she just says that she never decided to say anything to heather because it was just awkward and it was dropped and it wasn't something that she even wanted to talk about so it sounds like nicole was never interested in bringing this information on camera Mm -hmm. it was Mm -hmm. always just shannon who wanted to bring this information on camera but the funniest part of this whole situation is Terry and Heather are having a very staged, pre-agreed-upon conversation with Nicole, as in Heather and Terry agreed what they were going to say to Nicole. And that did not happen within two minutes of the prior conversation. No, that was at least, they were up there for like two hours. Yeah, they were upstairs two hours. The producers convinced her convinced them Terry was in his pajamas. He had to take out his leather and wear a hat. (laughs) It took a while for all of that to happen, a fresh glass of champagne, and then come down. It did not happen right away. There's no way that she went up that hot and angry and walked down that calm all of a sudden. exactly. And then they say, Mm -hmm. (laughs) this is my, this is so maniacal. I could not believe it happened. And I like, 
wish that I could have rewound and watched. I'm going to watch it again because yeah. it was just, it was so bone chilling and so funny. And Nicole is hysterically crying. She's so yeah. upset. And Terry bends down. And he puts her hand, his hand on her and he said, hey, but you know what? Thanks for dropping. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for dropping it, right? The suit. And then he and Heather look at each other and they cackle. And Nicole is hysterically crying. My mind was blown. I was like, oh my God. I love the DeBros so much. They're so fake and they're insane. Can't we just rename it and call it the Heather DeBro show? I'm okay with it. Hon- honestly, it's so yeah. good. Mm. It's yeah. amazing. Mm. And Nicole is still crying. <laughs> oh my God, it was very. <laughs> oh, what a beautiful, beautiful show. And that was the first ha- first part of the show. The rest yeah, of and, it. And was- the party doesn't even end here because yeah. there's still confrontations after this. Right. Heather confronts Gina and she says, guess what? You, I'm going to shoot the fucking messenger. So yeah. she, she, she tells Gina, I know that it wasn't you, but you did yeah. bring the information up. So it is on you. However, you, Shannon, I'm the most mad at you. She does her little wagging, yeah, fancy yeah, yeah, pants yeah, yeah. finger. And Shannon gets really upset because you do not talk to the elderly that way. <laughs> <laughs> and Shannon says, you know what? You know what, Heather? I'm not doing this. My heart is clean. And she says, yeah. tearfully, she's apologizing to Heather. And she says, I am a loyal friend. And Heather <laughs> straight up says, no, you're not. No, you're not. <laughs> and Shannon's face, when that happens, she's like, huh? What? Yeah. Shannon what literally do I do doesn't now? know. What do I do now? Yeah. Oh, my God. Can you imagine if Ramona had been in Shannon's place? It would have played out the same. Exactly the same. Oh, my God. <laughs> and then it's so sad because Shannon kind of waddles away down the oh. hall in a very Ramona way. Yes. It was awkward. She even looked like Ramona with her, you know, the odd dress she was wearing, the yeah, odd hair. The hair. And then she was walking with her legs look weird, like Ramona, like she's just got off a hot horse and she's walking <laughs> and could barely keep her legs together. And she walked away slowly. I was like, oh my God, that and is so sad. And the camera stayed on her for like on- five right. beats too long. Oh, it's a long hallway to the <laughs> door. so sad. <laughs> uh, oh. And then Heather walks around with her with her champagne glass and apologizes to everybody, the chefs, about all the food that they didn't even eat, the entrees that weren't even touched. Uh, I'm like, they better be feeding someone all that food. Yeah, Max is sitting there eating just like with more for yeah. me. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> The next day, everybody's just, like, talking to each other about what was going mm-hmm. on. Shannon is collecting friends because she officially mm-hmm. has no friends. And so right. she's like, all right, I guess I, I, uh, I guess I'll take Noella. <laughs> she's like, let me call the uh, traffic crossing guard that tried to <laughs> help me last night. <laughs> the Girl Scout that helped me last night. Let me call her. <laughs> And then the Dubros uh, sit and they're talking. And I forgot that the Dubros love to have these staged sit down conversations. Oh, yes. Oh, my God. Terry loves those. Terry, Terry loves, loves them. them. And <sighs> it's very funny because Heather is an actress, so she's clearly mm-hmm. acting. Yeah. But Terry is also acting. He's just acting very badly. And it's a good thing that his face doesn't move because that, <laughs> it would have just moved the wrong way and it would have made that acting even worse. When he says, this is this social BS is so infuriating and nothing moved on his face. And I'm like, I wish I had a face like that where I get infuriated and nothing moves. But my damn face is so natural. Everything moves. I cannot hide my <laughs> hide my feelings. <laughs> yeah. She's like, ugh, the party was 36,000 on. He's like, oh, I am incensed. And it's like nothing, nothing on his no. face moves. <laughs> Terry asks, why would Shannon bring this up? And Heather says it was never Shannon's business to bring it Mm. up. The only reason she can think is that 
Shannon wants to hurt the Dubros. And then Terry yeah. says, well, why would Shannon want to hurt us? <laughs> and it was almost like he said it in a way to be like, and now, Bravo, it is time for you to roll the footage to 2014. Oh, like, when Heather tried to get me to 5150 or whatever, Shannon Dubro. Shannon oh, yeah. Bidor, remember? <laughs> yeah. Heather was going to ask Terry to call and uh, declare that Shannon was insane. Yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. why Shannon wants to take you down because yeah. you said you were going to take down the Bidors, remember? Yeah. yeah. They literally, I will, that is one of the uh, most insane things that Bidor, the Debros did was at that party when <laughs> Heather goes up to Terry and she's like, yeah, I'm just, I'm worried, like, this is like when Shannon had her first meltdown, her very first season. <laughs> Heather's like, yeah, I don't know. Maybe we should like, like call an ambulance. I'm not, should we call 911? I'm so worried about her. <laughs> also the season where Terry and Heather, if you want to see Terry and Heather's bad acting, just, it's so good. There's so many moments. Shannon's just- first year was the best Terry and Heather bad acting year. Yeah. They have that scene where they get out of the party, the dinner party, where they pretend like Max is sick. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. But the phone yes. isn't even on. <laughs> yeah. It's the best. It's so good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we see Jennifer and her husband, who I know Shane is weird, but I feel like Jennifer's husband might be weirder. Mm. Yeah. With his chihuahua and his no shirt. And he eats yeah. like a toddler. Yeah. Like he, it looks like, it looks like she found. I don't get him. I don't get her with him. I don't get it. It's weird. It feels, and I'm I'm not trying to, this is going to sound insane, but it sounds, it looked like something you would see in like a Disney movie plot where a woman babysits a young boy and then the young boy has a spell and the spell ages the young boy into an adult man. And then the woman has to pretend like that man is her husband. That is what Jennifer's husband feels like to me. (laughs) I don't know. This was a very detailed script that they wrote for Listen, them. if <laughs> you watch the Disney Channel and you've ever watched Disney <laughs> Channel movies, that is what it's like. I know that might not be your generation, Arthi. Yeah. But the millennials <laughs> and Gen Zs understand what I'm saying right now. Did you just call me old? Did you just put me into the age box like Shannon and Ramona? <laughs> Check your phone, Noelle is calling you. Are you are you trying to be respectfully disrespectful to me right now? <laughs> Every episode. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. I start charities. <laughs> <laughs> you actually do sit on the board of charities, too. Yes. <laughs> um, Emily and Shane, what do you think about Shane? Because we've never talked about these people before together. I think a law degree gives him a lot more confidence. <laughs> so that he's <laughs> a lawyer. So yeah. They dropped the bar and he raised, <laughs> he, he got over it. Yeah. yeah. He seems to be a lot more confident. I'm very interested in how they navigate religion, though. That is yeah. something that we don't talk about. They don't talk about enough in the show. They bring it up once in a while. Every every season, they will bring it up, but nothing go, it doesn't go anywhere. The fact that Shane is actually a Mormon, right? A Persian Shane, Mormon. Yeah, he's a Persian Mormon, which is so rare. Yeah. It's so, and he converted to Mormonism. Yeah, like Lisa um, Barlow, but she, he is, um, and he, and, and Emily is agnostic. Yeah. She's not an atheist, but she's agnostic, and he lets her be agnostic and has n- no problems with it, and she, but she wants her kids to be religious because, but she is not part of the religion. Yes. It's, it's a weird, that was a weird conversation. In some ways it made sense. But in other ways, I was like, Emily, if you think the religion is providing that kind of structure, how come you are not interested in it? I can see wanting better for your children than you do for yourself. But is if you think it is better, what's stopping her from converting or, you know, practicing? She likes to drink. Oh, maybe that's why. Yeah, he <laughs> yeah that's probably he it. He doesn't drink, right? Yeah. Yeah. Then Emily, Gina, and Heather meet for lunch. And Gina explains to Heather why she told her. Gina was triggered to a previous experience where her ex-husband and her went to a barbecue. Everybody knew that Gina's husband was cheating on her with some woman who was at that barbecue. It was, I guess, at that woman's house. Everybody knew. And then Gina found out later and she felt so stupid because she was in a room where everybody knew something bad about her and she was the only one that didn't know. Mm Mm-hmm. 
I was yeah, like, that okay. That is fucked up. That is really fucked up, though, that he took her there. Uh, I mean, Gina's literally been through hell since oh, being yeah. on the yeah. show. Yeah. It's so funny that she signed up for this show while all of this was happening, or she didn't even know this was going to come down her path. Yeah. I'm still confused about why they're so mad at Shannon. And I think also because it's not like Shannon brought Nicole on the show. Because Shannon pretended to be their friend, but was trying to use them against Heather. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, After yeah, yeah, yeah. all these years of ignoring them and making them feel like shit, now that Vicky and Tamara are no longer there, Shannon all of a sudden wanted to be friends with these two, and they were barely, you know, trusting Shannon, and then they find out that she was Shannon was trying to be messy. Yeah, and so, also because yeah. Shannon told Heather, don't trust Emily and Gina, while telling Emily and Gina, Pinky promised me sisterhood of the traveling pants, don't say anything to Heather. <laughs> I don't know if that's and, and she, Heather's uh, argument is true. If if Shannon tells Heather not to trust them, how come Shannon is then telling Emily and Gina that something that and wants them to be trustworthy? Yeah, it's yeah. because Shannon is a bad producer. Shannon is too old for this game. I'm she sorry, is. poor Shannon. She's so tetherless here. It's just like watching a balloon flying away, Heather. <laughs> <laughs> well, it you know, and um, Ultimate Girls Trip right now, we were talking like last time about how Ramona really doesn't have anybody. Yeah. Like she yeah. has Avery, but like when she's done with this stuff, she just mm -hmm. stays around. Like she just sticks yeah. around. Like she was even talking about on Ultimate Girls Trip how like everybody's going to go back home and Ramona's just going to continue to hang out in like Florida or, or Turks and Caicos because she doesn't have anybody to go home to. Right. And I think like Shannon is afraid of that moment for her. Because yeah, yeah. we've not even sh we've not seen Shannon's boyfriend this season at all. No, no, I don't know what's happening with him. I don't know. Are they together now? Or I think they're still together. Up? I know Vicky oh, and yeah. her ex fiance are broken mm -hmm. up. Steve Lodge. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I mean, this was such a good episode. I was oh, just on such a high. I was cracking up the whole time. Yeah, I, I it went so fast too. I was like, by the time it was done, I was like, wait, that's it. I want yeah. more. <laughs> yeah. I can't wait to see more. So awesome. It was awesome. Um, okay, so we also had the Winter House trailer. Or sorry, the Summer so House trailer. I gave up on Winter House. So you have to first lay out the plot again. Okay. I know the last thing I saw was Paige was making out with the Italian dude. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't going anywhere. Yeah. And that was it. And then yes. Sierra and um, Muppet Mouth were making mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. And that was it. And after yeah. that, I just gave up. Uh, but I mean, that's pretty much what happened. What mm -hmm. happened on the show was that uh, Winter House, a quick, re it was only like, I think six episodes or seven episodes. It was a very short mm -hmm. series, Winter yeah. House. I was really annoyed because the Winter House trailer showed mm -hmm. this the one girl, Gabby, in the trailer, it shows Gabby saying, Kyle was flirting with me in the hot tub. Yeah. And there's a whole fight about Gabby and Kyle. Yeah. But for some reason, that was completely cut out of the show. What? completely cut out of the show i have no idea what happened with that it was super annoying oh, wow yeah so that was bizarre mm -hmm. um and now thinking back to it there is like a couple of episodes in winter house where kyle is like drunk and crying so i'm mm -hmm. like wondering if that happened in the same night i'm not sure but yeah. the most like the things that happened on the show was yes Paige hooks up with this guy andreas it doesn't go anywhere and they're mm -hmm. kind of like they leave the end of the trip with like we'll keep in touch and we'll date and blah 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 mm -hmm. but the show ends with a clip of Paige and craig making out in an elevator Ooh, yes okay and then muppet mouth and sierra end up hooking up but also Lindsay comes and <laughs> it's the best episode ever Lindsay comes and she's super drunk and she tells Muppet Mouth that she, I am in love with you in like her little Lindsay way. <laughs> <laughs> with you her have been club. in love with a lot of men, Lindsay. <laughs> yeah. It's very That's Ramona. Muppet I don't wear masks in the ocean. Like it's a very. <laughs> yeah. Does Muppet Mouth know how to make a sandwich? <laughs> if yeah. you thought Jason doesn't didn't make you enough sandwiches, do you think this lazy ass Muppet Mouth is gonna make you a sandwich ever? <laughs> he can barely make the beer that makes his gives him a paycheck. Yeah. Wait, which Jason? Wasn't it Jason that she was going out with? The sandwich go sandwich guy that See, she who was the sandwich guy? No, he had like a another name. They had like a like a, a he was a Greek man and he had like a Greek name. I thought his Stra name was Strauss, Jason. Strauss, Strauss, 
Stav- Stavi, 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 Stavi. He was a I Greek was- man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Stavi. Stavi was a guy. But Jason is a guy in this house. So Chris Lindsay comes and she drunkenly tells Austin <laughs> that she is in love with him. And then Austin says, I love you like a sister. But of course, Austin is an oh asshole because God. he's like led her on. They've hooked up before. Yeah. All this stuff. But all this is happening because Austin is now hooking up with Sierra. So yeah. Lindsay says, whatever, forget you. But there's a Jason that's like gorgeous. The the one black guy in the house mm-hmm. who's like amazing looking. He like cooks. He's like so nice. Yeah. And he and Lindsay end up and hooking up. Yeah. They didn't hook up during the show. It was after the show. Lindsay and... um. I guess his name is Jason, the guy, the, the yeah, black Lindsay and Jason yeah. hook up in the show. Okay. And that's where it ends. It wasn't that exciting, mm-hmm. but the Summer House trailer looks interesting, but I'm mad because where's Jason? Yeah. So Jason's not there. Did they break up before the Summer House, the next Summer House was filmed? I don't know, but short... Summer House was filmed obviously this summer, but while Winter House was on, all mm-hmm. these people have been and watch what happens live. And there was all this drama that happened with Muppet Mouth and Lindsay mm-hmm. because Muppet Mouth was forced like on what not forced, but he was on watch what happens live and he had to pick like, oh, who's a better kisser? Who is prettier? All this stuff. And Lindsay was sitting in the audience at watch what oh, happens live God. with him. Yeah. With like, I think Austin's sister mm-hmm. and Austin picked Sierra in all of those questions that Andy was asking her mm-hmm. while Lindsay was sitting in the audience. So it was like, who's the better kisser? He was like, Sierra, who do you like to snuggle <laughs> with? Sierra, like all these things. And so Lindsay was like horrified. And now mm-hmm. Lindsay has blocked Muppet now, thankfully. But then Lindsay got to go and watch what happens after that. And yeah. she got to answer a bunch of questions of like, who's a better kisser, Jason and Austin mm-hmm. or versus Austin. And she got to get her revenge. And she picked Jason on all of them. Mm-hmm. So good for you, Lindsay. But Sierra, who is really turning out to be the flop of the century. When I saw how messy she was on Summer House yes. and how disgusting she was, that's when I lost lost her. So she, I was like, how can you be a nurse and be that messy? So she went on Watch What Happens. Yeah. And They asked her, like, what did you think about Lindsay blocking and not talking to Austin anymore after all that stuff happened between them because of the appearance on Watch What Happens Live? And Sierra says something like, it's not my fault that Austin likes me better. I mean, I win. Get over it. I was like, you win? You're not winning if you're winning Austin. Yeah. That's not a prize. Yeah. Yeah. That's not a prize. That's a punishment. That is a punishment. So, so Stravi, Stravi's name was Steven. Yeah, but you never said Steven. You said Jason. What did I say? Jason. Yeah, you've oh, been shit. sitting here Googling all this time. Who am I talking to right now? No, you're talking to me. I'm listening. <laughs> but I was so convinced that his name was Jason. Well, okay. Steven <laughs> Stravi. Okay, okay, got it. Yes, okay, okay. okay. I'm getting all of Lindsay's men confused. Yeah. Um. Anyway, so the new trailer for Summer House came out. And it's like, ooh, who is Paige going to be with, Craig or Andreas? Like, what's the point? We know that Craig and Paige are together. Why are they talking about stuff everybody already knows? Even I- even, even the whole, like, Amanda and Kyle are having wedding issues. Are they going to make it down the aisle? Like, yeah, they did. Uh, they're they're did. married. You know that. Yeah. Like, at least set it up a slightly differently, right? But also, the trailer left me very... It was very uninspired. It was a lot of the same thing, a lot of drunkenness, a lot of woohoo and screaming and all of that and fights. And you couldn't quite tell who was fighting who and for what and what was going on. And at the end of it, it was like, if you want to object to this marriage, please stand up. And then like showing everybody's face and then they got married anyway. Yeah. So it felt like nothing made me want to watch it. I don't oh, know why. I'll tell you what made me want to watch it. Why is yeah. Sierra throwing a wine glass at Danielle? <gasps> she threw it at Danielle? Yes. I threw it, but I didn't know. Wait, see, that's the only reason I would watch is to watch Lindsay and Danielle together again. Because yes. I love Danielle. And I was yes. upset that she wasn't in Winter House. I'm glad and she wasn't. That is the only reason I would watch is to support Danielle. Yeah. Yeah. Don't mess with Danielle. She's the perfect person. You're telling me you weren't intrigued by Austin telling Lindsay he's going to eat her from front to back? Wait, he said that to Lindsay or? 
Austin yes. said that? Yeah, Austin is saying that to Lindsay. Oh my God. <laughs> like a Buddha. <laughs> like a Buddha. <laughs> Now you just now you just just you know you spoil the buttas buttas for me. Oh my god, that's my favorite thing. To eat. <laughs> if you don't know what a butta is, it's a roasted corn. It's like street corn in India and Pakistan. <laughs> <laughs> that was my like favorite thing to do when I go back home. <laughs> now I can never. Every time I eat it, I'm gonna think of Austin. Oh my god, <laughs> we love you corn. You, me, and the couchies. We all love corn. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I have a Jack's couch and now I cannot eat butters. I'm like, I'm like <laughs> everything is spoiled by these assholes. And then, and then, um, yeah. So I, the thing that I'm like the most intrigued about is like, what hap? What? Why would anybody like? There's so much drama about like Lindsay possibly hooking up with Austin. Mm-hmm. Sierra, po- Sierra still hooking up yes. with Austin. Sierra fighting with people over Austin, and then. The other thing is, are Lindsay and Carl together? Maybe, possibly. Oh, my God. Carl, Lindsay needs to get checked out before you go back with her. <laughs> no, I'm, like, protective of Carl. Yeah. <laughs> because yeah. Lindsay has been with Austin. Yeah, that's exactly. Like, that's, like, at least three full courses of antibiotics before you go in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, like, Austin is, like, the East Coast Jacks. Like, ugh. I don't want it. No. Nobody's yeah. asking for this. No. Send it back. Like, he's going to age so badly. I mean, he thinks he's going to age into a Harry, Harry Dubin, but he's going to just turn into a Jax with nothing in it. Yes. Nothing to go for him. Yes. And I don't I don't want the Southern Charm people on Summer House. I don't. Yeah. I don't want it. I can tolerate Craig in the background, yes. but I cannot tolerate anybody else. Yeah. No. No, I yeah. can't. Oh, what a day. What a what day. What a day. What a day. It was worth every every minute of waking up. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> like when I woke up this morning, I barely could wake up because I've been sick for a while. Uh-huh. But there must be something to look forward to today. And what a yeah. day. Oh my God. It this is it. Up. You know, I'm gonna sleep like a baby. <laughs> it was a good night. <laughs> it was. <laughs> Okay, well, um, that's it for this episode. I might even release this early. Yeah. I yeah. might just throw this. Congratulations, you're listening on a Thursday, maybe. Because <laughs> I'm going to you Arizona. just got overly excited. Oh, by the way, I have been watching Sun- Selling Sunset. And yeah. oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, my God. So many thoughts. Yeah, yeah. So well, thoughts. why don't you share them right now? You want to talk about Selling Sunset? I am, like, halfway through it. I'm not all the way through the, the um, season, whatever season I'm watching. Okay. Is season f- five or? Yeah, five. Five. Four. Yeah. Four. Yeah. Four. Yeah. yeah. So I'm not, ha- I'm only halfway through it. I just got to Tarek's um, yacht party. <laughs> oh my God. You What what you said about Tarek? Like, yeah. I mean, sir. Coke have to some the nines. shame. Yeah. yeah. Hide your Coke. No. Wipe your Coke lines. No. <laughs> it's like, why is he being so thirsty? He's being such a <laughs> horrible person. Like, what is? Uh, and it's the entire show is so good because the houses are just as pretty as these women, right? Yes. And that's where that's what I love about the these shows is the houses that we get to see, mm-hmm. and these women walk through it as if you know they actually worked hard to get those houses yeah. those things or whatever. Yeah. And they're walking through it and they're showcasing it and they're talking about the upper level and the lower level and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. It is so funny to watch all of these homes. Mary is, everybody seems to be filmed with an uh, Instagram filter except yeah. for Mary. It's like they the producers turn it off for Mary. No, <laughs> I, think, I think the problem is that it doesn't really work on Mary. I don't think oh. it helps her. <laughs> No one help Mary. Uh, oh, that's so sad. <laughs> She's so sad. She's the most tragic character on reality TV. <laughs> and my conspiracy theory about Christine is that she had a surrogate who carried yeah. the baby. And she was wearing, um, a, you know, a pillow yeah. all the while. Because there's no way she had no hips during that pregnancy. She mm-hmm. didn't even develop hips. No. How does that happen? No. And she wears... 
clothes that are not maternity clothes. So you're not nursing the baby and you pretend you're nursing the baby. That's not happening. Yeah. I Here's the thing. Mm-hmm. I was back and forth because, I mean, you're only halfway through. Mm-hmm. I was back and forth about like, oh, maybe she did, maybe she didn't. But by the end of the ep- the season, I was, I'm very convinced that Christine Quinn is a pathological liar. Oh, yes. Yeah. So I can't wait for you to finish it and then we will cover it on our Patreon. Oh, I cannot wait. I want to have a whole conversation about Davina. I want to have a whole conversation about Christine. I want to have a conversation about Chriselle. And I just remembered Amanda, and I was like, wait a minute, she is my favorite. Yes. I have always liked Amanda and her story, and I cannot wait to find out what's happening with her and her yes. ex. Yeah. That is just absolutely it's great. riveting. Yeah. Yeah. It's the and, dumbest, you know, greatest show of our generation. Dumbest, greatest show. That bell that hangs in their office is smarter than all of them put together. <laughs> It's sharper Mm. and has more substance to it than all of them. Yeah, for sure. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Okay, guys. Well, we will talk to you guys next time. Bye. Bye. The reality is is now on Patreon, and here are some of our fabulous supporters. Jesse Willis. I may not run in traffic, but I'll give you a run for your money. Rody. When you work in quality assurance, perfection comes easy. Tori Tuchilo. When Tori steps on the scene, you are his story. Eugene Henderson. In the game of life, I choose Jeopardy. Maria M. Where I come from, they sing God Save the Queen. The truth is, it's actually me. Becca Simon. If you can't stand the heat, come to Minnesota. Jill Hirsch. Your petty drama can't take this warrior down. Jamie Allrunner. Some people call me cold, but it's not me. It's that Minnesota weather. Sarah Gibbs. You may not like the cut of my jet, but that's what you get from Sarah Gibbs. Richie D. If you can't be cool, you can't be with Caduce. Megan Shaw. I may be a model, but I'll never be your model minority. Samaj Bledson. The fun bus is here! And I'm driving on the turn Pike. Eleanor Manning. I run with a fabulous circle of people, and they're not even on my payroll. Danny McLaughlin. First, I came out, and now I'm coming for everything. Kelly Paper. I may be from down under, but don't ever underestimate me. Seiran Hayati. In Sweden, we have ABBA, IKEA, and if you mess with me, some other four-letter words. Jessica Riley. Where I come from, money can buy you anything, but I'll take the garbage plate. Chastity Davis. Don't be fooled by my name. The only thing I abstain from is your bullshit. Sarah Watkins Philstein. Playtime is over. This mom means business. Laura Zielinski. Whether it's breast pumping or fist bumping, this mama brings the party. Jill Walsh. I made it up the hill myself and I'll kick any jack off. And finally, diamonds aren't a girl's best friend. John Friedman is.